Hi, Ben Constable with you from Spark Systems. Today I'll introduce you to Enterprise Architect's powerful database engineering toolset. The new database builder, introduced in Enterprise Architect 12, provides advanced database design capabilities that allow you to model, construct, explore, difference, query, and update your database all within the integrated modeling environment. This means you can maximize productivity and traceability from abstract data concepts right through to database implementation. The purpose of this webinar is to show you how to get started when designing and implementing your own relational databases in Enterprise Architect. Using a simple example, I'll show you how to define a physical data model, create, connect to and query the live database using Enterprise Architect, and to synchronize the live database schema as your data model changes. In future webinars, I'll cover some related and advanced concepts such as reverse engineering and customizing EA's DDL code generation templates. My goal is to model this simple sales database schema consisting of just two tables, customer and account, and a few columns. In UML terms, tables are modeled as classes with a stereotype, and columns are modeled as stereotyped UML attributes. Of course, I want EA to automatically generate the schema for my sales database, then instantiate it as a live database, and help me to execute queries against it. As I change my original database model, I want EA to synchronize those changes to the live database. To start with, I'll implement my design as a simple file-based database using Firebird. That's a really quick way to get started without any significant DBMS setup required. After that, I'll show you how to do the same for MySQL as a more realistic example of a DBMS server. Well, how do we create the physical data model in the first place? Enterprise Architect 12 provides numerous predefined physical data models to help kickstart your project. Let's add a couple of these model patterns now, one for each target DBMS platform. From the project browser, click the New Model Pattern icon. I'll choose Firebird and MySQL data models for this example. Notice the hierarchy of UML packages created for me is appropriate for each target DBMS. The stereotype packages inform me that you're using these models specifically for database engineering. Aside from these packages, you can reorganize the sub-packages as you please. Notice each model pattern includes diagrams in which we can visualize the schema using UML. As in previous versions of VA, you can build up schemas diagrammatically using the toolbox. Or instead, leverage the powerful new database builder to model schemas in a database-centric view. The database builder lists each database or physical data model in your repository. You can see the Firebird and MySQL model stubs we just created. So let's start modeling our example sales database schema starting with the customer table. Right click the tables folder and choose add new table. I'll name it customer. In the Columns tab, I can immediately begin modeling the columns for my customer table. For example, I want a customer ID column to uniquely identify customers, so it's my primary key. And two more columns to store first and last names. Let's start. We can easily add and remove constraints and assign fields as primary keys via the Constraints tab. Let's adjust the primary key constraint we already have on the Customer ID field. For example, I could add one of the Name columns to the primary key. Note that constraints are automatically modeled as UML operations in the Project Browser. Refreshing the package, you'll see the additional parameter I just added to the primary key constraint.
and now I'll revert that change. Now let's create our second table, Account. And I'll add its columns. And let's look at the corresponding UML diagram for our database schema. First I'll remove the unused elements. Now drop on the Customer and Account tables. Quickly lay out the diagram. And you can see each table is represented by a UML class, whereas columns represented by UML attributes. Back to the Database Builder, note the Connections folder. It binds one or more live databases to our model. The databases could be remote server-based DBMS instances or local files. And we can create multiple connections, facilitating quick access to and synchronization between development, test, and production servers. Let's add connections for our test and production databases now. We don't have any databases to connect to yet, but you can easily create a new Firebird database using Enterprise Architect directly by right-clicking a connection, choose DB Connection Properties, then Firebird, then simply type a name and Enterprise Architect will create the new Firebird database file for you. This is the database connection I want EA to associate with my model for now. So right click and set as active DB connection. Well now that I've connected to a live database, I can use EA's new SQL Scratchpad to query the database. The Scratchpad can execute ad hoc SQL queries against the connected database. For example, let's verify that we have a new empty database without any tables. So I'll copy in my query and run it. And as expected, our query returns no user-defined tables yet. The Messages tab shows the query was indeed successful. Now we can reuse this query later by saving it either to a file, or more conveniently in the model itself. I'll save this as a new SQL query in the model. Notice the query is now available in the Queries folder of the Database Builder and it's modelled as a stereotyped UML element in the Project Browser. Obviously, we want to populate our database with tables by first changing the model, then pushing the differences out to the live database. So how can you keep the model and database in sync as you make design changes? The Database Builder's Compare tool helps you do just that. I'll run it now. The Database Compare tab highlights the design differences between our database model and the implemented live database. As we expect, there are two differences between our model and the empty Firebird database we created, these being the two tables we added to the model earlier. Now I can choose an appropriate action to sync the model and database, or I can click Set Synchronize All if I want to push all differences from the model to the database. Now EA can generate the necessary SQL statements to synchronize the live database schema with the latest model. At this point, I could save the SQL statements to file, then execute them manually. Or I can run the statements directly from EA using the Database Builder's execution queue. As I execute each statement, the results are shown. Let's see what's now in the database by rerunning our query to show all user-defined tables. As expected, we now have two tables in our database, Account and Customer. 
our model and database are again in sync. We can continue to modify our design now and still keep the live database in sync. For example, let's make two changes to the data model. First, I'll change the length of an existing column in the database. Then, I'll add a new column to the table. My first change. And my second change, a new column. Recomparing shows the two differences between the model of our customer table and the live database schema. Now let's resync the live database with the latest model. So after executing the DDL update statements, the database compare feature will show our model and database are again in sync. Now let's query the database server for all the user-defined tables and columns to verify the changes were successfully implemented on the live database. Again, we use the SQL scratch pad to execute the query. I'll just paste in the query and run it. Looking at the results, we see our updated first name field with its new length of 100 characters and our new address field is also included in the live database schema. Comparing our updated UML diagram, we see the visual model also precisely reflects the live database schema. Now let's repeat the implementation with a different target database, this time MySQL. MySQL is not a file-based DBMS, so you'll need to have access to an existing database server, which you set up outside of Enterprise Architect. Once you have a MySQL server instance, the next step is to connect to it from within Enterprise Architect. You do this with an ODBC connection using the menu Tools, ODBC Data Sources. Click Add, then choose your driver of choice, MySQL for this example. I'm running a local MySQL instance, so I'll name the connection accordingly, localhost. Finally, choose the database that you want to implement or update from the model, so my sales example here, then test your connection to make sure it's valid. Next, we tell EA to connect our MySQL physical data model to the database behind the ODBC connection we just created. So open the database builder and create a connection. Configure it for ODBC. I created a machine data source, localhost. Now activate that connection in EA. And let's verify we have an empty live database to work with by running a query against it to show all tables. I'll paste in a query to show all the tables in the database, run it, and as expected we have no tables yet. Now I'll take a shortcut in modelling the same example schema for MySQL. Just copy and paste the Firebird table elements within the project browser and change the target DBMS platform. So here are my tables under the MySQL model. Now to change the database property of each table from Firebird to MySQL. Same for customer. Well, the physical data model is now complete. Time to implement it. We can generate the DDL statements either from the database compare tab as before or directly from the database folder in the database builder. Again, I'll generate the DDL statements to the built-in execution engine rather than an external file. 
Now executing our SQL statements that have been generated. We then run our show tables query again and see that the account and customer tables are implemented. We can also verify the columns with another query. And these columns clearly match our design in the database builder. You see in the columns tab. So our database works precisely as designed. All that remains is to fill it with data. So today you've learned how to create a new physical data model for a target DBMS, getting a head start with EA's built-in model patterns. You also saw how to leverage EA12's new database builder to implement, connect to, and query the database from our model, and to synchronize changes made in our model with our live database schema. That's it for our first webinar on database engineering with Enterprise Architect. Later, we'll share some tips on modeling other database concepts like foreign keys, and talk about reverse engineering existing databases. In future, we'll also demonstrate how to customize EA's DDL templates for finer control when forward engineering databases. For now, as always, happy modeling.